Welcome back to The Hive Doctor, your beekeeping mentor. It's my job to take the guesswork out of beekeeping for you. Today, I'm going to show you how to build frames using a frame jig. And this process works for any size frame, whether it's deep hive body frames, medium super frames, or even shallow super frames. Pretty sure it'll take shallows. I'm going to show you how to put frames together in a way that they will last for years to come. I'm also going to show you the wrong way to put them together and explain that so that you don't have frames coming apart during hive inspections and constantly need to be repairing those frames. So stick around. Today I'm going to be using my frame jig to put together frames. This jig is made to be able to build 10 frames at the same time. So the tools that we're going to be using is a 10 frame frame jig. I got this one through Man Lake catalog. I've got a bundle of 100 frames. So I'm going to be building 100 of them eventually, not on this video. I'm just going to show you a few so that you get the idea and can do it yourself at home. But 100 frames is enough to fill 10 honey supers. And in those frames that we build, I'm going to be putting plastic inserts in. Now this is BPA free plastic. It comes with a, a light coat of beeswax to help entice the bees to draw out wax and comb on them a little bit more quickly. And to do this job, I'm going to be using my, my rigid air stapler. We're going to hook this up to the air compressor today. And when you do this, you want to use inch and a half narrow crown staples or at the least inch and a quarter narrow crown staples. But I would not go shorter than inch and a quarter because you want those frames to last for a long time. And unlike when we put bee boxes together where we use glue in the joints, when you build frames, you do not want to use glue. And the reason behind that is because frames can break over time because they go through a lot of wear and tear. And you can replace individual frame parts and repair that frame and put it back into service as long as you don't glue it together. If you use wood glue, it's going to be really difficult to get those the broken part off of the good part and to replace it with a fresh new part. Plus, frames, when they're put together the right way, they don't need glue. And as always, I'm going to put a link in the description below for all the tools that you see me using today. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing you always want to do is to set up your workspace. I've got a nice, flat, raised space so that I can work with my frame jig comfortably and a nice level. I've got all of my parts within reach and whether you're building 10 frames or 100 or even 500 or 1000, a nice workspace is going to be more efficient, you're going to have more fun and the process is going to go much more smoothly. Now the way this frame jig is made is we've got two removable boards, this one and this one here. And the reason these come out is for the end process. And I will show that to you once we've finished our 10 frames. But it's the way that we are able to pinch our end bars in place using this spring-loaded board. It presses our end bars up against this board, keeps them in place so that we can install our top bars and our bottom bars. When it comes to putting frames together, we always start with our end bars. And as you can see, we've got a, a wider top part with a groove cut out for our top bars. And then this end bar narrows and tapers to an end at the bottom where we have a cutout for our bottom bars. These are what we put into the frame jig first and it's what the frame jig holds in place while we do the rest of the job. You always want to put these in the frame jig narrow side down. So in other words, the frame is going to be sitting upright like this. And the reason for that is if you put it in upside down, once your frames are completely put together, you have kind of trapped the frame jig in the middle of your frames and you can't get them out unless you take your frame jig apart. That's the case at least with this style frame jig. So we're going to put them in bottom bar side down. And this is a 10 frame jig. So 10 end bars will fit along the end here and then 10 along this side. So we're going to go ahead and fill it up. Now we have our frame jig loaded. We've got 10 end bars on this side, 10 on this side, and we're ready for our top bars. Now I keep all of my parts in the bundles. That kind of contains them for me in a much more 
tidy way so that they're not sprawled out everywhere. If I need something, I just push from the other side of the bundle and pull out the bars that I need. I've got my bottom bars on the bottom here. I need 10 of them, so I'm gonna pull them out. Now when we put these in, these particular top bars and bottom bars are grooved top bars and bottom bars. They're specific for putting in plastic inserts. Now if you're using beeswax foundation, you'll wanna get a wedged top bar because it's designed to hold the metal tabs that are in the wax. So now you just want to line up the grooves together and they come from the factory fitting pretty darn well. But if it's a little bit tight, you can take a, one of your bars and kind of just tap it in place. So we just do this one end at a time, groove facing down. Once we have all 10 of these in place, we're going to get our stapler out and I'll show you exactly how to staple these the right way. Another thing I want to explain is, okay, so we're about to staple these frames together. There's something that you need to know and I'm going to explain right now for you. Most of the time when you buy frames already assembled, you'll see one staple right here in the middle of the top bar. And then one staple on the other end right here in the middle of the top bar. That's the wrong way to put these frames together. And the reason for that is right in the middle, if you look on this side, you're going through a lot of the groove. So your staple is not actually grabbing any meat or, or wood per se. So you're actually losing some of the grip that your staple has on keeping this frame together. What you want to do to put this together the correct way is to put a staple off center, one here, and off center, one here. So you've actually got two staples going through your top bar, through the thickest part of the wood into your end bar. That's what's going to keep these together and it's going to be what makes them last for years to come as you pry these and pry these over and over through the months and through the years up and out of the boxes during hive inspections. With our top bars in place and our staple gun loaded and ready to go, we're going to go ahead and fasten these top bars into place. Now you do not want to orient your staple gun this way. If you staple this way, the staples will go in and because they're long, they'll want to split out and they'll end up coming out of the end bar. And if that happens, which it occasionally does anyways, you'll want to take some pliers and move that staple back and forth till it breaks or take a grinding wheel to it or a cutoff wheel. You don't want that metal sticking out because when you're handling frames and manipulating frames, those staples are gonna poke you in the finger eventually. So the way you want to orient your staple gun rather than this way with your frames is this way. And this particular rigid staple gun, I like it because it's got this arrow showing you where the staple's gonna come out. And this is always pressed in all the way against the material that you are stapling against. So once this is pushed in all the way and you hit the trigger, that staple is delivered. So I'm gonna position this where I want it and I'm gonna angle my gun just a little bit towards the center to help keep the staple from wanting to come out the side of the end bar. And remember, one there, one there, both of them off center, so they're not going through that groove. And I do the same thing all the way down this side, and then we're gonna do it all the way down this side. Here's what those top bars look like up close. This is the ear of the top bar. It's the part that rests on the frame rest in your box. We have our staples oriented. See the way our staples are oriented? This one I got a little bit too far towards the side, but fortunately it didn't come out the side of the end bar, so we're good. And this takes practice and that's okay. Every once in a while the grain of the wood is gonna shoot part of the staple out of the side. It just happens. Once you've got two staples in the end of each top bar, it's time to pick up your entire jig, bring it on end, support your top bar so they don't fall out of the jig, and flip it over. Then push that jig down, make sure it's nice and flat, pull out 10 bottom boards. There's three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And you do the same thing that you did with the top bars. You orient the groove down and then you match up the ends. And once you've got all 10 in place, it'll be time to staple those. And when we start stapling these 
bottom bars. It's a little more challenging than it was with the top bars because the bottom bars are more narrow and you've got to fit in two staples, but it's worth it to keep that frame lasting longer. And with practice, you'll be surprised how good you can get at this. This is one of those jobs I really enjoy doing in beekeeping because it passes the time, gives my hands something to do, and I don't have to think so much. Or if I do think, I just think, I kind of let my mind wander. And that's one of the beautiful things about beekeeping. It's a job you can learn to take your take your time with and enjoy every aspect of as much as you want to and get involved in. You could buy frames already assembled if you really want to. But I like to do this and it saves a little bit of money. We've got our staple gun loaded and we're going to orient it the same way, just like this, not like this. And our staples are going to be a little bit closer together. And again, I'm going to angle my gun towards the center of that end bar so that I don't have any staples coming out of the sides. One thing that you may run into is a bottom bar that's not sitting all the way flush against the groove of the end bar. And what you'll want to do is make sure that you pull that tight with your fingers so that it's in there flush. Sometimes it'll stay, sometimes it won't, and it'll want to come back out. So you'll need to hold it, hold it in place while you put a staple in it. Now you'll want to put a staple on the opposite side that your finger is at. In case the grain of the wood shoots that staple out the side, you don't want to shoot a staple through your finger. So I would even wear gloves with this kind of job. So with my finger holding this in place, I would put a staple on this side and feel safe about it. But this one's staying in place, so I don't have to worry about holding it there. I can go ahead and remove my hand and keep working. And that's what it looks like when we've got the staples in there just right. They're pretty close to one another, but it's exactly where we want them. Notice how they're going through the thick parts of the wood rather than the middle through that groove. We're getting a lot more grip and friction keeping this frame together. All right, now it's time to remove the jig out of the way and to take our frames out. And the way you do that is by picking up with your fingers the jig. You raise the jig up and you use your thumbs and against the bottom bars to push them down. And that jig will come up and those sliding boards that were in the jig fall right out. And now they're sitting in here. We just take those out of the way, set our jig to the side, and now we have our frames ready to put plastic inserts into. And this is a nice sturdy frame. I'm gripping it with both hands, wiggling it back and forth. And I can tell this is exactly the kind of strength I'm looking for in a quality construction to keep that frame going. Now I'm gonna point out one thing here. You can see here, one of my staples kind of came out of the side. It did not come out a lot. So I'm going to leave it that way. If it came out a lot, you'd wanna take pliers like I mentioned and just twist it back and forth and eventually because it's a thin metal it'll break off or you can take a small grinder to it uh, another thing you can do is if you've got a tap hammer just put this on a hard surface not your frames and tap that in for now we're going to go ahead and reset up our workspace and get our plastic inserts ready to put in so since i bought a bundle of 100 frames i also bought a box of 100 plastic inserts these are really simple to put in and it's probably the most fun part what you want to do is take the frame in your less dominant hand by the middle of the top bar. Take the plastic insert in your dominant hand and insert this part of that insert into the groove of the top bar. All right, so it's in there and you'll notice the bottom will actually go in and it's because it's made to fit just right. So we have to actually apply some pressure to put this insert the rest of the way in. Fortunately, this is plastic, so it's flexible. So I kind of just put this against me and press with my fingers. Oh my gosh, this one's tough. <laughs> press with my fingers and it slides right into that top bar. It moves around a little bit, that's no big deal. Just make sure it's fully seated on both the top and bottom. And now this is ready to put into a honey super. And once I've got all 10 frames, that honey super will be ready to put on bees right at the beginning of a honey flow. So all that's left is to finish these up again, right into the top bar, clicking it into place. One more time, insert into the top bar first, 
click into place, make sure it's seated completely. And instead of setting these aside like this, you could set them one at a time right into your Honey Super so that it's ready to go and you're getting this stuff out of your way, cleaning up your workspace as you're finishing up a job. So I've got all 10 frames in here, just finished up putting in my last frame, as you can see. And now this Honey Super is ready for the beginning of my Honey Flow. Now, some pointers that you're really gonna wanna pay attention to here is, one, if you decide to go with wax foundation instead of a plastic insert, you are eventually, and every beekeeper is eventually going to run across wax moth. When you use beeswax foundation, a wax moth sometime in the future will end up destroying all of that. And all you're gonna be left with is a wooden frame full of wax moth webbing and their poop and stuff that they leave behind. But with something like this, when wax moth destroys all the comb that the bees will eventually build on this, I've at least got this foundation for them to start over from. So it's not like they're starting from scratch. Another thing that you need to keep in mind is bees do not like to draw out bare foundation of any kind unless there's a honey flow going on. So if you put this on at a time when there's not a honey flow and you're wondering whenever you do a hive inspection, why aren't they drawing this out? It's because they don't have the incoming resources to do so. So become familiar with when the honey flow begins in your area and the different honey flows that you have. Most likely you're gonna have a stronger honey flow and then one that's not quite as strong. Those are the times of year that you want to put this on. You will be amazed at how fast honeybees can build out comb and fill it with honey. And before long, you'll be harvesting that honey and it's gonna be delicious. And then you're gonna have a beautiful box of comb for your bees to use next time after you're done harvesting. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Drop me one of these, tell your friends about the Hive Doctor, and I'll catch you in the next video.